We could tell Navy stories from now till never. Although these aren't the best ones. The best ones always, well, I should say the best ones with Phil involve beer and usually fighting. No. Maybe was... those aren't the best ones. Those are probably the worst ones. <laughs> We think we found a place that we both visited in the very beginning of our Navy careers. <laughs> We're not too sure. Okay, it's according to the map behind me is the enlisted club that was on the service school command side. Yeah, so this is a place where young sailors like us, when we first came in while we were going to school here, we could go to the enlisted club and have a beverage of or two. Well, we could because the drinking age here on the base at the time was, was only 18, 18 yeah. even though it was 21 out in town. But we could only have beer and wine. And right. needless to say, my very first alcoholic beverage was right here, right inside those doors. My very first one was peach wine coolers. I had two. <laughs> and let's just say we don't drink peach wine coolers today because of that. That's yeah. all I'm saying. <laughs> well, nobody should ever drink a peach wine cooler. Well, it sounded like a good idea at the time. No. But we're taking the trip. We're continuing the trip down memory yeah. lane because we both went to this. I went to boot camp here. She flew here after her boot camp in Orlando to come to a school here. So we're trying to find some of the old buildings. It's pretty hard because they've turned most everything over to the city. Does this street look familiar? It should go all the way down. Follow the road all the way down to the end. There used to be a gate there. It's in a, it's in a very famous movie. It kind of inspired me and my buddy to join the Navy. We're standing on Ingram Field, and this is the location that the Navy used back in the 20s. And when all the guys came in that enlisted, they had to be out here in tents for three weeks to make sure they didn't bring disease to pass on. Yeah, nobody wanted cooties in boot camp. <laughs> Ingram Field was actually named after a first class gunner's mate who was the first person killed in World War I. On sunshine. Some of the old barracks is now all art places. Yeah, and I don't recognize any of this. So, I mean, it was 33 years ago that I was last here on these grounds. So. And his memory is lacking. Well, at least when it comes to me, anyway. Who are you? <laughs> all right, we're finally getting our bearings a little bit. The barracks that we, we think. showed you, which is 17, 16, whatever, they're at the actual service school side, which is the site I was on. And the um, the barracks that we're looking for for Phil, we have not found them yet. Yeah, I was. We both came over here for schools after boot camp. Now it's things are starting to look a little familiar. Nothing looks familiar to me. Um, <laughs> but I still want to find out where I actually went to boot camp. What where those barracks are. So we're still on the hunt. This area looks a little bit more familiar to me, only because we used to sneak around in one of the barracks. We were not allowed to wear civilian clothes, but of course, girls don't want to wear those ugly old uniforms when they go out in town. So we would sneak into the cook's barracks and right inside the door we would head and there was a, a head right here. We would take our bag and change our clothes and sneak back out the door. We're standing outside building one, which was the mess hall for the school side, not the boot camp side. Right, so you, you get to come over on this side and enjoy a better meal. Not. <laughs> um, I do recall eating both galleys, one on the recruit side and then one on the school side. And Weren't they at the same? They, well, they, I don't know. We ate so fast in, in boot camp that anything after that, we didn't even taste. We just woofed it down. So You were on a clock back then. Yeah, we were. But this is, this is a pretty cool area. If you come to Liberty Park, you have to come check out the market. Yeah. Walking through all the different shops and, and little mini restaurants and the smells that were in there, it's fantastic. Yeah, they have a ton of options to choose from. And it's funny, we decided to choose the crepes, but of course, you know, it is our 30th anniversary today, and during our 20th anniversary, we actually went to London and Paris, and what we loved over there was their crepes you would get on the street. It was the best <laughs> yeah. ever. And I gotta tell you, this one that we just had today did not even compare to that one. And, and as we were eating it, Stacy said, I guess we gotta go back to Paris. Guess we must. I agree, so Paris, maybe, soon. I don't know. This right here is a USS Recruit, or the USS Never Sail, as the, the sailors that came through here called. 
But this is where we learned how to board a ship, handle mooring lines, things like that. It was pretty cool when we came through boot camp. And if you see the flags flying up there, try to figure out what they spell. I'll give you a short hint. I just told you the name of the ship. 33 years ago, I walked up the, the a ladder. A scared 18-year-old boy. Yeah, yeah this was... Uh, and I thought, man, this is great. We get to go and, and play on the ship. And then I realized it wasn't even a real ship. <laughs> but we did, when I was at boot camp, we did sit here in front of the ship in the bleachers. And we were talking to our, our company commander, who was the chief at the time. And he was asking us, you know, what, what kind of ships do you want to go on? And, and most of us were like, none. We don't want to go to sea. Um, That's funny because when I joined the Navy, it never dawned on me that I would actually have to. <laughs> yeah, that was the same with us. And then when we got our orders, and for me and my buddy, Rich, um, you know, we came in on the buddy program together, so we were guaranteed boot camp, school, and then our first duty assignment. We both got an aircraft carrier. We were scared to death. Then we found out we were going over to Japan. We were 10 times more scared um, just because of the unknown. But I yeah. tell you what, best thing that ever happened to me at age 18. Well, that's because I was in Japan and he met yeah, me there. That's, that's right. Fine. That's right. Of course, I got my orders. I was in a building like over there at school when I got my orders. And of course I cried for two days <laughs> because I was going to Japan. And actually my dad was not really happy about that. Yeah, he was a Vietnam vet. Um, he was his, he was just scared for his baby girl. Yeah. I wasn't supposed to be leaving yeah. the country. But little did he know she was gonna meet me and I was gonna take care of her uh, for the rest right. of um, her life. Yeah, yeah. Who took care of who? Whatever, it's a love story. It'll be it'll be on uh, the Hallmark Channel one day. Oh yeah, yeah, right, right. I know Phil was joking around earlier about the USS Recruit, but it is pretty cool. It is a two-third scale model of a destroyer. Yeah, and I, I didn't know that it was it was modeled after an actual destroyer. However, here's a little Navy tip for you. Did tip, you tip. know? <laughs> That's that, a family joke, by yeah. the way. The USS Recruit was commissioned in 1949, and it is the only commissioned ship never to reach water. Hmm, how's that? That is interesting. And it says over 50,000 recruits came aboard the A ship year. every year yeah. to learn about Navy skills. That's it's crazy. It's really cool. That is crazy. And it is a historical monument here. Yeah, it's a uh, landmark. That's it, really cool. So if you're in San, San Diego, you have to come and check it out. It's really cool. It is. And I can tell you, let me pan this way real fast. That Homewood Suites was not here when I was here. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you that. Well, if it was here, those fellows that were trying to escape might have ran there. Yeah, instead we would sit. Uh, we haven't found our recruit barracks yet, but... It may not be here anymore. NTC San Diego, the recruit Navy Recruiting Command, was butted up next to MCRD, the Marine Corps Recruiting Depot, and the airport was just on the other side of that. So we would sit at night on the back stairwell um, looking out um, at the airport and just wishing we were on one of those planes getting out of here. And we would see guys literally run out of their barracks, throw their wool blanket over the top of the barbed wire fence, jump over the fence and, and take off running through the field, thinking they were headed to the airport trying to escape. Wah, wah, wah. When in reality, they were jumping right into the Marine Corps recruit side. Um, and our company commander would tell us that they would always get caught over there. Um, and then the Marines would kind of hold them for a couple days just for a little training. Well, I think after that, they would think the Navy was a piece of cake. So they <laughs> yeah. probably decided it wasn't so yeah. bad. But we would see, I mean, there wasn't a night that didn't go by when we were in boot camp that we saw somebody jump over that fence. Uh, we, me and my buddy, we, we never thought about it. I mean, it was, you know, to us, once we realized that we were just playing a big game and we had to follow yeah. along no matter yeah. how crazy the training was or, you know, getting yelled at, it was just, we kept telling ourselves, just a game, we're in it to win it. Um, then it was okay. For us, we never tried to escape. I think the worst thing we did is all the all the females were on the third floor of our barracks in Florida. And the worst thing we would do is um, we would throw our boots, our boondockers as they were called, down to the second floor. All the guys would shine them for us and throw it back up to us <laughs> so we didn't have to do it. <laughs> That's crazy. Them guys were suckers. Uh, no, they did a great job. Yeah, we had a guy in my boot camp company company we didn't get to do anything crazy like that we would it was all guys here but we had hey. a guy that was on fire watch so he's supposed to be walking the the decks it was a lame night, thing to do um and he was to make sure that if there was a fire we all got out okay so basically he had to look at all the sockets to make sure there's no heat or fire coming <laughs> yeah. out of the sockets that was what a boot camp fire watch did but this guy decided to run down to the next barracks where all the gee dunk machines or vending machines yeah. for civilians 
and he ended up buying like I don't know ten baby Ruth candy bars. On the way back, he got caught. Oh. There was a duty chief that caught him. Uh, so you can imagine what his nickname was for the rest of boot camp. They didn't. They they made his life rough. They didn't boot him out. Um, but he was then called Seaman Recruit Baby Ruth. <laughs> Well, it's better than what I was called. I was called Hillbilly, Hick, uh, you name it, I was called it. My accent was so thick back in the day. Let's hear a piece of your accent. I can't do it anymore. Being from Georgia, we would be marching across the base and they would stop the whole company and they would pull me out of ranks and I would be surrounded by four or five company commanders and they would just make me talk <laughs> so they could stand there and laugh. Hi, y'all. <laughs> yeah, it was something I like know. that. Only much better because, you know, Phil's Southern drawl is awful. Yeah, mine is. But here's another boot camp story. We were practicing for our pass and review and our final inspection that we, you know, we we had different company commanders come and they would watch us do facing movement, marching, rifle moves, the whole nine. And right before that, my buddy Rich, who was, who was the second recruit in charge, so I was the recruit company chief. Yes, Phil was a butt kisser even back in the day. No, I was a dude that knew how to march because I did <laughs> uh -huh. ROTC uh -huh. in high school. Okay, so anyway, sure. I was number one, Rich was number two. And we were standing in front of the company when the inspectors came up. But right before that, weeks before that, Rich broke his hand. So he was in a cast on his right hand and that's your saluting hand. So the, the weeks leading up to it, Rich would practice with his left hand, practice with his left hand. Mm -hmm. They walked up to us, we popped a salute, and Rich popped that left hand, and they, they stopped and they went, do that again? So he popped that left hand up there, and they asked him, why are you using your left hand? And he showed them his right hand was in a cast, because he was, had a long sleeve shirt on, they didn't notice it. They said, well, we've seen enough, you guys are good, and left. So all that work we did, we could have just showed him Rich saluting, and we would have got off a lot easier. That was oh our story. Gosh. Oh my gosh, that was so much fun. Yeah, we absolutely had a blast um, running through San Diego. We did have a short window to get through everything, so um, we we made the most of it. And as you can see by the video, we had a blast. It was so cool to go back to you know see the places we used to live. That was where our kids were born. I mean, we were there for nine. Well, I was there for nine years. You were there for eight years. I got there yeah. ahead of him, but I mean, it was so cool, and it looks so different now. Yeah, we almost did not recognize. Well, we didn't recognize any of our old stomping grounds. Um, I mean, that's we left there in 1999, um, so that had been the first time that we'd been back there yeah. to do that. Um, but absolutely had a blast. At Midway, I was like a kid in a candy store. I could have stayed there forever, um, just oohing and on. And, and uh, I got to tell you, it was really nice to share it with our insiders, oh, um, yeah. the ones that could meet up with us. It was it was a ton of fun. Um, if you haven't been to the Midway. And you're in San Diego, give it a check. Yeah, and we have a lot of other stuff planned for our our insiders, our mm -hmm. patrons, whatever you want to call them. So if you're interested, meetups, camping events, all kind of stuff we have coming up, I'll drop a link down below and you guys can check it out. We would have liked to have um, gotten around a little bit more and maybe, um, you know, I don't know, relived a little bit more of our past. I don't know. I don't know. We don't want to relive all of that. Yeah. And contrary <laughs> to popular belief, I'm a lover, not a fighter. Oh, Okay. Someday if we're sitting around a campfire, I can tell you some stories. And he would not have said that back then. I might have said it like that. It might have been a reverse <laughs> order, but I might have said it. All right, guys. Um, we just want to say thanks for hanging out with us. If you didn't see the Midway video, which is uh, kind of second part of this, I'll put the link down below. You've got to check that out. And definitely take a tour of it if you're in San Diego. Yeah, it's a must. I tell you, it again, um, if, you've, if you've ever seen or been on a, a U.S. Navy ship or warship, you know how special it is when you go back. And for me, it was super special because that was the the vessel, no pun intended, that brought Stacy and I together in Japan. So I am, I Even was Even when we were on a break, it just kept showing up and coming back. We were never on a break. We were on a break. <laughs> but <laughs> Again, that's you, a story for a campfire. Yeah, yeah, those are sea stories that you only get if you're sitting around a campfire with us. But All right, guys. Thanks again for watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And give us a thumbs up. She's I'll jump in before thunder, Phil does. Because normally I'd screw that part up. And don't forget to visit our webpage, todayissomeday.net, and our Facebook and Instagram, and our village if you're so inclined. Oh, yeah. And we're dabbling on TikTok now. So if you're over there, <laughs> look us up. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how much I'm going to dabble, but we do exist. No, the Stacy is dabbling in TikTok. I'm, I'm probably the talk of it because I don't know anything about it. So <laughs> check All right, us guys. out. Thanks a lot, and we'll see you next time.
Bye. On the road. We got a beautiful